Good evening and welcome. Uh, I'm Dave Gordon, the Sacramento County Superintendent of Schools, and it's my honor to welcome you to our Sacramento County 2023 Teachers of the Year Awards Dinner, our first dinner in person in three years. Isn't it great to be back in person again? <clears throat> We are in for an exciting evening where we'll meet some of our most inspirational teachers of the year. But before we recognize them, we would like you to hear from last year's top teachers. Mandy Garner, who teaches agriculture at Liberty Ranch High School in the Galt Joint Union High School District. And Yvonne Thornton, who teaches chemistry, math, and study skills at Cordova High School in the Folsom Cordova Unified School District. Please welcome Mandy and Yvonne. Good evening. Last night I had the honor to attend my son's back to school night. I am the parent of a 13 year old boy, which I was not prepared for. <clears throat> and as I walked into his last period of the day, his last teacher, he leaned over and whispered to me, this guy is so inspirational. And I thought, first I'm inspired because he taught eighth grade math. <laughs> but I got to hear what he has to say. And it didn't take me long to realize why my son was so inspired. He went on to tell us about how math was a language and how in order to have students really understand math, they just like French or German or Spanish, they had to learn the language. And how he incorporated careers into his class and all the exciting careers in math that these kids could take advantage of. I mean, if that guy had a tip jar on his desk, I would have thrown all the money that I had in my wallet on his drawer. And I, as I was walking out, I kind of wanted to give him a standing ovation. I didn't because my son already thinks that I'm horrifying and everything I do is embarrassing. But I realized, you know, in education, we really don't give standing ovations to inspirational teachers. So you can understand why this last year was so surreal for us, so out of the ordinary. To all of the people that made that possible, thank you so much. To Superintendent Gordon and all of your amazing staff, thank you for a really incredible year that recognized a lot of really special teachers in our county. It really was a once in a lifetime opportunity. And to those who are being recognized tonight as next year's Teachers of the Year, enjoy your standing ovation moment. And hopefully, it can serve as an inspiration to all of us that those times where we're recognized in that way for our hard work really does matter. And maybe we can take that home and finding the standing ovation moments for our administration that's so, so supportive of us behind the scenes. Or to the, our coworkers who aren't recognized in this way as we are tonight. Or maybe to the student in our classes who works really hard but normally doesn't get recognized in that way. The Sacramento County Teacher of the Year was a really amazing title that I really didn't feel deserving of. But what I will commit to is for the rest of my career to work really hard to learn and grow to live up to that title. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for this last year of really amazing experiences of being recognized at halftime and, and really important to dinners like this. And um, from the bottom of my heart, it really just meant a lot. And I hope that one day I can live up to the title of a teacher of the year. So congratulations to everyone and thank you. I think I'm going to have Mandy write my speech next time. <laughs> Thanks, Mandy. So I advise a club at my high school. It's called the Interact Club. And our motto is um, service above self. And as the beginning of the school year has started and we're trying to recruit new club members after such a hard last few COVID years, I've been thinking a lot about what those words mean to me and why they're so meaningful. I don't think many teachers in this room became teachers for awards. Um, I did, like Mandy just said, uh, I didn't know they existed. And when I became a teacher, I was just like, yeah, I'm a teach, woohoo. Um, but what happens when you become a teacher is that our students become a part of us and they become our daily routines and are a part of our lives. Um, and without thinking, oftentimes we are serving their needs above our own. 
So uh, in my journey as the Sac County Teacher of the Year, I felt like the spokesperson for the Lancers at Cordova High School that I serve, uh, the teachers that I work with, the students that I get to spend my days with, and selfishly, eight-year-old Yvonne, who got to throw the first pitch at the River Cats game, was living her best life. <laughs> and she's like, wow, look what you did. And then Digger gave me a hug, or I hugged him. It was kind of blurry, but it happened. <laughs> it's one of those things in your life you never thought about that was going to happen for you. But it's not because... Um, it's because we all practice service above self. Every single one of us takes the time to make a kid's day, to do the extra mile for a student. And now you guys are the county class of 2023 Teachers of the Year finalists. And I'm proud to be amongst you. And every day we enhance lives and I'm proud to be a part of that with you guys. So congratulations. Thank you, Mandy and Yvonne. Let's give them another nice, nice round of applause. Uh, that's a high bar for our uh, winners uh, coming up for this, for this coming year. Uh, tonight, you will meet 12 outstanding teachers. You'll hear their stories and learn what inspires them. Prepare to be impressed. Have a few laughs and maybe shed a tear or two. And now let's get this show going, and it's my pleasure now to introduce our Master of Ceremonies for tonight. Vicki Gonzalez is host of the Insight Program on Capital Public Radio. She is a Murrow and Emmy Award-winning journalist with nearly 15 years of experience as a reporter, news anchor, and producer. Vicki loves calling Sacramento home, and when she's not working on Insight, you can find her and her, her husband at a local farmer's market floating down the American River or on the Jedediah Smith bike trail. Vicki, we are so honored to have you here with us this evening. Please join me in welcoming Vicki Gonzalez. Thanks, Dave. I've interviewed Dave many a times, so I'm happy, I'm happy to be here and have dinner with him. Well, Thank you so much, Superintendent Gordon, and thanks to everyone for being here tonight. After a couple of years of you know, being remote, it must be so nice to break bread with each other, look at each other's faces, and also just celebrate each other tonight. And it also is an honor to be your master of ceremony. Well, for me, teachers have a very special place in my heart and gonna go out on a limb. I think teachers have been formative to pretty much everyone here, probably why a lot of you devoted a good part of your life to the classroom and the generations of lives that you shape. So I'm a product of Los Angeles Unified from pretty much preschool through graduation. That is home to more than 600,000 students, so it's a very small school district. <laughs> but when it comes to Mr. Beatty, he saw each of us as individuals. So I was fortunate to have Mr. Beatty through middle school. I had him twice in high school for AP history, and then again as a service student for my senior year because he was just that special. He's why I earned college credit, passing the AP exam, so thank you, Mr. Beatty. But really the reason why I loved Mr. Beatty so much was so much more than teaching history. His class was filled with energy and excitement. You could just see how much he loved his job and that we all were a very important ingredient to that. So if he would notice that a student was cold, he would literally lend his jacket. He lent me a fork that admittedly I forgot to return <laughs> and kept by accident. But even after high school as a college student, starting my career in journalism, working the local education beat, Mr. Beatty was there again to lend his support. You know, I profiled him, I met him in his classroom, and he met me with the same warm energy and just a big hug that Mr. Beatty usually does. And despite how big Eagle Rock High is, it's a junior high and a high school, 4,000 students from 7th to 12th grade. Years later, several years later, he remembered me and he still believed in me. So I'll always remember from that interview, oh gosh, maybe like over a decade ago or so, uh, Mr. Beatty said he had the best job in the world and he could never imagine taking his show on the road. <laughs> well, Mr. Beatty retired this year 
and the beautiful part about social media filled his Facebook page, hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of heartfelt comments from students. I mean, we all spanned decades. And we all pretty much, though, said the same thing, that we were grateful to have Mr. Beatty in our lives. And because of him, we learned the power of teachers because of what he devoted each and every day for decades to the classroom. So thank you so much. And I'm sure we're going to have so many more great stories tonight. So for the very, very first one, representing the Center Joint Union School District as 2023 Teacher of the Year is Katie Edwards. Katie teaches fourth grade at Oak Hill Elementary. Hello, this is like what my nightmares are made of. So, um, so bear with me. Um, I don't know if Stuart's here, but getting that email this week that, oh, you got to memorize your speech. That didn't happen, Stuart, so I'm going to be reading. Um, I am more than honored to be selected as Center Unified's Teacher of the Year. Now more than ever, the needs of our students are intense. Center recognizes that and has ramped up their efforts to provide mental health in, and intervention services to every single campus. The district has reached out and found partnerships and resources ensuring that all students are able to be better served. Growing up, being a teacher was never on my radar. I wanted to save the whales and work with Greenpeace, um, have my free willy moment, if you will. Um, I entered college as a marine biology major, and at the first shark dissection, I decided maybe this is not for me. So sitting on the ground looking through the college catalog, um, for those of you who are younger, that was a book that had all the majors in it. Um, <laughs> I found um, teaching, liberal studies, and I thought, you know what, maybe that'll still allow me to inspire the kids to go out and save the whales and save the planet and everything. Um, and little did I know that um, this, it was quite the opposite. The students had more of the effect on me. Every single student who has crossed my path in the last 24 years of teaching has impacted me in different ways. Some of them have helped me learn patience and how to keep my frustrations in check. I think we've all had those. Others have taught me compassion and the importance of embracing all of our differences. They have taught me to laugh and to enjoy every moment. They've helped me realize that teaching is not about curriculum or test scores. Teaching is about inspiring children to grow into people who are not afraid to speak out for what they believe. People who are willing to fight for change in order to better our society. People who are willing to do whatever it takes to protect those who are defenseless. I'm so grateful to work at Oak Hill where team efforts are in place to support the whole child. From grade level teams, behaviorists, psychologists, counselors, and administrators, all of whom were in my classroom last year, um, I could not have done my job without you. A special thank you to my family for understanding the demands of this job and giving me grace when I come home after a challenging day or with piles of papers to grade. Also, thank you to my teacher friends who are currently waiting for me up in Tahoe for our, what we call our Teachers Gone Wild weekend. Um, <laughs> it's more Teachers Gone Mild now that we've gotten older. Um, <laughs> but they are great sounding boards and always help me see the humor in all situations. Um, being an educator is not for the faint of heart. I didn't bring a glass up here, but cheers to you all. Thank you. Representing Elk Grove Unified School District as 2023 Teacher of the Year is Rachel Baird. Rachel teaches 11th and 12th grade English and AP Capstone at Cosumnes Oaks High School. Congratulations. shorter. Um, first of all, I'm a, a huge Capital Public Radio fangirl, so this is pretty exciting for me. Um, I am not native to Sacramento, um, and when I first moved here, I was kind of shocked by uh, the like four degrees of separation instead of the, the six degrees of separation we normally expect. Um, in Elk Grove Unified, it's more like one and a half degrees of separation. Um, I've taught our former uh, mayor's uh, daughter. I've taught our current mayor's sons. Uh, I've taught our superintendent's son, um, board members' children, uh, probably some of your children I don't even know uh, anymore. And 
Um, I know a lot of teachers don't like to live and work in their community, um, but my children go to my school. Um, I see my students everywhere um, when I'm taking the dog for a walk, when I'm going to Trader Joe's. Um, they, they all work at Rayleigh somehow at some point. Um, <laughs> And I just love that about our district. Like, I love that we are this tight, like, we're the fifth largest district in California, but it doesn't feel like it. Um, and so it's really special to be here and to be honored um, representing Elk Grove Unified. Um, for those of you who haven't gone back yet this year, it feels normal, and I will knock on wood. Uh, for the first time, I think, in about three years, um, we had back to school night this week, we had spirit week, we had an in-person rally, and there's just so much joy. Um, and I think it's been a long time for all of us that we felt that joy, um, and I hope we all get to keep that this year. Okay, representing the Folsom Cordova Unified School District as 2023 Teacher of the Year is Christina Ray. Christina teaches ninth and 12th grade English at Vista Del Lago High School. Congratulations. Thank you. Good evening. I am honored to be in the presence of such phenomenal educators and to be named the FCUSD Teacher of the Year. There are many people who fostered my love of learning and helped me to discover my passion for education. From my first teachers, my parents, who encouraged me, to my high school teachers, who inspired me, to the colleagues and administrators who support me on a daily basis at Vista Del Lago, and most importantly, to the students who helped me discover my why. Thank you. Through my 10 years as an educator, I've had a motto that drives most of my work. All means all. If we believe in them, all of our students can and will learn. They can and will succeed, every single one of them. My students know that I believe in them, all of them. I tell them every day at an almost obnoxious level. I encourage them to recognize their own strengths and celebrate their growth, even when those steps towards proficiency can seem a little arduous. When we intrinsically believe that all of our students can and will learn, we don't let our students fail. And when we remove that failure from the table, our students are more willing to take risks. They're encouraged to think critically, they engage, they learn, they leave our classrooms empowered to make a difference, and they lend their voices to the narratives of our society. In March of 2020, as we all are too painfully aware, <laughs> education was forever changed. We saw our classrooms shift to Bitmoji slides that we were far more proud of than our students thought they were cool, but they were cool. <laughs> Our handshakes turned to waves through a screen and reminders to mute. Our faces of our students dimmed to little initials on a screen. And while we may now be back to mostly normal, I echo that, thank you, <laughs> our day-to-day -day operations at our school site feel like they're back, we need to continue to adapt as we adjust to what is now the new reality of education. More than ever, we need to remember that all means all as we work to engage all of our students and help them to discover their passions. So to all of you in this room today who helped to build this spirit of efficacy at your own sites and in your own districts, as you inspire your students, thank you. Up next, representing Natomas Unified School District as 2023 Teacher of the Year is Mark Bornstein. Mark teaches second grade at Paso Verde School. Congratulations. Thank you. I feel like we are knocking on wood tonight. Yes. I will echo that as well. I um, am so honored to be uh, the Natomas Unified School District Teacher of the Year. It's just a, 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 such an amazing honor. Um, in 2003, I was on a bus with about 80 first graders and we were going on our annual uh, field trip to the zoo much celebrated looked forward to every year i was the teacher in charge i was a third year teacher and uh, we were just on the bus ready to go we got to the zoo we got off i met my representative there handed the paperwork and just ready to go and the representative looked at me and said i'm a little confused i you know i'm not sure what's going on and i said no 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 i, I have a confirmation i pulled out my paper and I looked down and I had a sinking feeling realizing that it was I was a week early with a, a week early with 80 first graders 
three teachers, at least 25 parent volunteers, um, all the money, everything to go. So quite the experience. Um, <clears throat> You know, there are no perfect teachers, right? There are no, <clears throat> excuse me, no perfect classrooms. But uh, what we can choose is our, our trajectory, <clears throat> excuse me, our trajectory of who we're going to be, our aspirations for where we're going to go. Um, and that desired trajectory is, is something that takes us places um, in those moments where we are living that out. A friend once told me, excellence is something <clears throat> that insists on itself. And that really stuck to me as um, something that is a, just a great perspective in a classroom. It's those moments, it's those kids, it's those, those chats with parents, um, that little extra that you do. And uh, I know that is something that has uh, been so powerful in my life. So I am uh, just super honored to be the teacher of the year. I want to thank my wife, <laughs> Lena, my team, April and Beth, uh, Tanya Gerald, Chris Evans, my wonderful uh, uh, principal, Amy. So thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Thanks. All right, representing the River Delta Unified School District as 2023 Teacher of the Year is Gabino Perez. At the time of nomination, Gabino was a fifth grade teacher. However, he has since been promoted to principal. So congratulations. <laughs> Good evening. I too did not remember or memorize my speech, so I printed it out. Um, I'm going to keep it short and sweet because this is very emotional for me. Um, I was a fifth grade teacher at Walnut Grove Elementary School, and since then I've moved on to the principal position. Um, <clears throat> River Delta Unified School District and Walnut Grove Elementary School hold a special place in my heart. I attended Walnut Grove as a student and graduated from River Delta in 2008 from Delta, or River Delta Unified School District in 2008 from Delta High School. So I've made it full circle. I have fond memories of my teachers, staff, and friends. The River Delta community has helped me become the man I am today. I was blessed to be offered my very first position at Walnut Grove Elementary School teaching TK. Absolutely loved it. It's like herding cats. <laughs> <laughs> I am fortunate to be able to give back to this community and help serve all of our students. I want to thank my friends, family, my partner, my mentor Steve Wright, my principal Carrie Norris, and Superintendent Wright for all the support they have provided throughout my educational career. I am honored to represent River Delta Unified School District as their Teacher of the Year, and congratulations to all the other educators we are celebrating tonight. Have a wonderful evening. Okay, representing the Robles School District as 2023 Teacher of the Year is Matthew Crane. Matthew teaches physical edu education at Maine Avenue School. Congratulations. Well, I can identify with the TK comment. I think I pulled part of my hamstrings pretending to be a kitten uh, <laughs> earlier today teaching physical education to TK. So. My days are very interesting, and uh, I have to say, it is truly an honor to be here tonight, uh, especially coming from the Robles School District. So many wonderful teachers that I've learned so much from, starting with Crystal, who's sitting at the table back here. She observed me and gave me all these great tips, and I loved her response the next time she came and observed me was, you actually applied everything I suggested. <laughs> you know, and I like to just really take this moment to thank everybody who is crucial into me being here today. I've had wonderful principals like Sarah and Paula Hansel back at the table. You took a chance on me when I was a rookie, Paula. Thank you. <laughs> oh boy, and then my years in college, Mike Bachman sitting back there. Oh, he helped me so much uh, just getting through some of those long study days because, well, like a lot of the kids that we teach, I have learning disabilities, and also I've kind of, I'm not genetically an athlete. There's some people that athletics come easy to. I'm the opposite, so that's why I love to teach PE when kids are like, I have asthma. I'm like, me too. <laughs> Since you can tell me that in such a great sentence, I know you're fine, let's go. <laughs> and, and there's just so much more I have two of my wonderful students. And not many teachers will tell you who their favorite students are, I will. 
George and Raul are back there. They came and joined me tonight, and I'm truly thankful. Uh, I always were thinking of my students when trying to create the lessons that I wished I had as a student, as, like, because I wanted to become fit. Now, if you read my, all my essays, you know, all of you knew that growing up, I was also bullied because I was overweight, you know, and that was hard. With a first name Matthew, I was called Fat Matt. And, uh, well, I changed that. I lost 92 pounds in like four months by becoming an exercise fanatic. And I saw not the outside change as much as the inside. The amount of confidence I gained from that, I wanted to give that through to others. So anytime I taught, I was always thinking of you guys in any way I can make it interesting, which by the way, they're both in much better shape than I am now. So it makes me so proud to see you both here tonight. I've got my lovely wife, Natalie. Thank you, hon. You, you speak for me sometimes, uh, maybe if I'm typing an email to a parent. <laughs> Natalie goes, ooh, that's a little defensive. <laughs> sure you want to come across like that? I'm like, ooh, we should change this a little bit. Like, yes, we should. <laughs> my son, Grayson, he was also my student at Main Avenue. We tested out so many lessons before I taught them to the kids at school. So Grayson, thank you for all those extra hours of PE you put in so my kids at Main Avenue could benefit from it. Uh, and then my parents. I am the youngest of five children. Four of us are teachers. We came about it in different ways, and it roots from my mother, Rhonda Crane. She's, she passed away about three years ago but she was a great teacher, amazing. And it, it, I know she's proud of me. And this moment right now, it's just a big thank you to my mom, but also my dad who's here, Richard Crane. He instilled in me a work ethic that I still feel every moment of every day because I strive every day to get better and better and better. And I'm here because of other great teachers. Other great teachers made me good at what I do. And thank you. And thank you for all that you do. Because not only are you great teachers, you're making others great. And it's the students you teach, the teachers you teach next to, you inspire so many. Thank you for your work. All right, so now we had to head to Sacramento City Unified School District where there are actually two teachers of the year for 2023. The first teacher is Lisa Betancourt. Lisa teaches third grade at Pacific Elementary School. Congratulations. I want to give a little shout out to SIVA because that is an amazing program and my students have benefited from it and Thank you, and I'm glad to see you back there. Um, I was thinking today, and it was actually not related to this because this is how much teachers affect us. I was talking to my daughter, probably lecturing her, and um, telling her about an incident where when I was in high school, our school play had been banned. Um, we started working on the play, and um, the community objected to whatever it was. I don't remember because we didn't do it and how my teacher at the time, my high school teacher, Pete Miller, who's now retired, um, had us do Fahrenheit 451. And that, to me, is um, exemplifies so much of what I want to be as a human, but also as a teacher, because he took a creative, in my mind, and positive approach to something. And I think of him all the time, and I hope that I can like live up to that. He's one of many good teachers, of course, but um, it's amazing how these teachers stay with us, right? And um, I'm just so honored. I'm even more honored now that I'm hearing these amazing teachers. I'm grateful to be recognized as one of the um, Sac City Unified Teachers of the Year. There's two of us. Um, I really wanted to thank the people I've worked with at Pacific Elementary over the years. There's some out here because we just tend to have some really amazing people. And um, 
I've been there, it's in South Sacramento, I've been there for 21 years now. Um, I have learned so much from my colleagues and the people that I've worked with there. Everyone there is hardworking and caring and I so appreciate the part of the community and the family that I, being a part of that family, I think it's such a great place to be and that's why I keep coming back. Um, and I'm grateful for all the people that I've learned from over the years at Pacific and then all around the profession because we do teach each other. Um, I hope I've taught someone in the profession, maybe I'll, that's, that's my future. Um, one of the best parts is seeing those people again, the people that have taught me and that I admire so much and I'm thinking that I'm being held in a space with some of those people is kind of mind blowing, um, but it's an honor. and. I was um, made, need to make sure I thank my family, my kids. As we all know, our kids are like constantly dragged through the ups and downs of teaching every day. My daughter was in my classroom today helping me get my classroom ready and she drags her friends along and um, my parents who continue to give to my donors choose projects even though I tell them they don't have to. <laughs> but they do every time and my mom writes a nice little note. And um, I'm so excited for this year ahead to just kind of, I want to talk to all these teachers that I've been hearing from and see the great work that everyone's doing. So thank you. And the second 2023 Teacher of the Year for Sacramento City Unified is Debbie Lawson. Debbie teaches fourth and fifth grades at Washington Elementary School. Congratulations. I have to take a minute and just pretend you're all 10 year olds right now. This is really intimidating when it's much easier to talk to the littles, but wow, wow, okay. It's an honor to be here today. I'll try not to be emotional. There are many people who have helped me become the person that stands here now. Thank you to Ms. Nelson and Ms. Johnson who believed in me and gave me my first teaching position at Parkway Elementary. A great big thank you to my Washington community, Dr. Godina, the staff and the families. I appreciate this opportunity to celebrate the field of education with all of its challenges, its mysteries and its joys. I have so much gratitude for the children and the families that I get to serve and build relationships with. I wouldn't be the teacher I am without them. A special thank you to my own family and my husband, my kids. They support my crazy ideas, my late night runs to Target, and to my daughter who continues to read books and tell me I have to read it with my class, even though she is much younger than them. Um, to my 10-year-old self. Through all the adversity and the unknowns, today happened. I had teachers who loved me and they saw this future for me. My greatest hope is to create a space where my students can feel the way I feel right now, honored, loved, appreciated, and motivated by all of these awesome teachers in this room. My greatest hope is that I walk into a classroom with one of my own children or grandchildren and I see one of my past students running that room. It would just be amazing. To my past and future classes, I love you on your good days, your hard days, when you get the lesson and when you don't, and I redo it. One of the biggest rewards of being a teacher is watching your students take over and do it better. Thank you to all of you who have loved and supported educators and placed your trust in us to provide these wide open doors so that our children can do everything and anything they want. Thank you. Okay, so representing the Sacramento County Office of Education as 2023 Teacher of the Year is Kevin Jordan. Kevin teaches horticulture in a career technical education program at Leo A. Palmeter Junior Senior High School. Congratulations. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for all the staff and everyone who has kind of worked together uh, to make this night possible. I know it takes a lot of work to put this on, so I really appreciate it. To be honored for what you do is not something that really happens for a lot of professions, and uh, sometimes we feel 
Like the, the effort we put in is uh, kind of thankless, but I feel like as a teacher, you, we, we get thanked quite a bit. So it's really special and it feels great to be um, appreciated in such a grand way. So I thank you all so much. It really means a lot. For the past 13 years, I've, been, I've had the honor of being a teacher, truly an honor. Um, it's a privilege to be able to help others to that kind of a position. And so for me, uh, I've really, I've loved every minute, even those hard days those hard nights where I've come home and been really upset and frustrated uh, with my performance that day at school, and then you kind of get back to the drawing board and reflect a little bit and come back. So for me, I really love teaching, uh, and the population that I teach for me really is really special. Uh, I teach middle school and high school students with uh, emotional and behavioral problems. A lot of the students who have had so much problem uh, throughout their life that they come to us in, in great need, and so like I said, to be in a position to help them uh, it really feels great. Uh, so I want to thank uh, all the staff at my school. Uh, I work with some pretty incredible people that are dedicated. My principal, Lauren Roth, has been so um, supportive of me. So I have to be uh, really, really thankful of that because I feel like uh, I teach horticulture. Uh, I, we, we garden, we grow plants, we cultivate, and, and we learn by doing. And so for me, um, over the past 13 years, we've transformed the landscape of our school, like literally the landscapes of our school, um, into uh, drought-tolerant la uh, landscapes and butterfly gardens and we have aquaponic systems, hydroponic systems. We grow strawberries and fruit. Just today, we made some food from the garden, some ratatouille. So for me, um, I feel as though, I'll take this moment to uh, put it out there, I feel that every school needs a place in which students can grow plants um, and grow as well. But yeah, I think gardens and small farms on schools is the way to go, um, no matter what the school is. At some scale, our students need to know, learn how to grow plants and grow food. Uh, if you go to the supermarket right now, it's, it's definitely very relevant, and uh, not just for our pocketbooks, but for our health. So for me, I, I love what I do, and it's an honor to get to do it. So I just got to say thank you, thank you, thank you. It's really incredible. I want to thank my wife. She's been so supportive of me uh, uh, over the years. She's been with me every step of the way, so thank you so much. And, and actually, I want to thank all the teachers that I've ever had. I've had so many wonderful teachers, from Mrs. Zinn to Mr. Waugh and Mr. Vassant and many others. I couldn't name them all. They've really had a, a profound impact on me throughout my life, just as your teachers have for you. And so looking back, I'm, I, now I just want to say thank you to all of my teachers. I know you're not here to hear it, but I am grateful. I really appreciated it. And I know I didn't say it at the time, but I was thinking it. And actually, you guys didn't realize, but I was thinking it, I hope at least. But I actually, one of the best educators in all of California is actually in the room tonight. And she came with me as my guest. It's pretty, pretty uh, credible. But this is a, a teacher who's never taken role, doesn't have a credential, um, but has definitely put in some pretty serious hours. And uh, that's my mom, <laughs> Kathy Jordan. <laughs> um, and you have been the best teacher of my life, you and dad. Uh, and you still, still are. And uh, I just appreciate everything you've done. And anything good I've ever done can be trace back to you and dad. So thank you so much. I love you so much. Thank you to all the teachers here tonight. Congratulations to you all hearing your stories. It's, it's no wonder why you're being celebrated. You all seem so fantastic. And I hope that we can collaborate in one way or another. Email me. I got plants for you, seeds, uh, seedlings. Doesn't matter. Win, lose, or draw. Um, I'm happy to uh, send as much off to you and your kids as possible, no matter what you teach. Um, thank you so much. Have a great night, everybody. Okay, so from San Juan Unified School District, has two actually, 2023 Teachers of the Year. The first is Logan Grinsell. Logan teaches sixth and eighth grade science, drama, and art at John Barrett Middle School. Congratulations. It's a little unfair we only get two minutes because I have a lot of teachers to thank. Um, I am very humbled and appreciative of this recognition, but I alone am not deserving of this honor. There are too many individuals that I have that have influenced and guided me throughout my life and has gotten to me here. Um, it reminds me of a quote by Isaac Newton, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants, and there are some giants in my life I do have to recognize. <clears throat> Uh, the amazing experiences going through the Sac State Credential Program, I cannot speak highly enough of them. Um, the, yeah, 
okay. Um, so <laughs> the, as well as the um, 12 years, it's been 12 years since I went through that, and they are still contacting me and supporting me throughout my years as a teacher. So they are really amazing. Um, having passionate mentor teachers at my student teaching experience at Sylvan Middle School and Jen Shaw and Lorraine Sindel, and it's been a great experience working with them, and I still get to work with them since they have moved with me to my new school um, at Barrett. Um, having passionate I'm sorry, working day in and day out with the staff at Barrett Middle School who feel like a family when we squabble over dress code, which I know we all um, probably do, um, as well as our cell phone policies, but all team up and support and go out for all the kids. Um, we all come together for them. Um, having a supportive administrative team in Amy Alexander Carter and Tim Murphy who let me pursue my passions and try out new clubs, fundraisers, activities, anything that really pops in my head, they are full force, um, even if it doesn't really work out. I want to thank my family, um, who has always provided me a warm and nurturing environment to grow and develop as a person while putting in the right obstacles to learn how to overcome um, and be a better equipped to survive in a world that we have today. But I want to especially thank my mother. She just retired this last year, so she and she's a teacher herself. Um, it is through observing her during her for my formative years and continuing and watching her as she teaches with compassion and strength, making sure every child is seen and heard, and continues to teach their te impact their lives far beyond the time in school. Still bumping into them when they're 40 year olds in the grocery store, and they shout out, "Hey, Mrs. Grinsell!" and she can sh she can respond with their name, which is mind boggling to me. Um, and have full conversations while I'm just waiting there as if I don't exist. <laughs> um, it clearly shows the impact that she has made and something that I know that I want to have in my future. I also must thank her for instilling in me the passion that I have for the sciences, learning and education in general. She would not only be my mother, she would not only be my mother at home, but a teacher, um, asking me questions, asking me to think about what, how does this impact us, how does this impact the world, and what is the observable universe? What I didn't know then is that she was preparing me for a lifelong career in education, as well as a, become a lifelong learner. And that is what I want to instill in all the students that come through my classroom. Thank you. Also representing San Juan Unified School District as 2023 Teacher of the Year is Nicolette Pooley. Nicolette teaches academic intervention for reading at Ottoman Elementary School. Congratulations. such a weird moment to be up here um, talking to adults since I spend most of my day hanging out with, you know, some five and six year olds and teaching them how to read. Um, like many of the other teachers who have come up before me and have expressed, um, you know, how influential the other people, you know, the, the teachers and our coworkers and our families are, um, I feel so undeserving to be up here. Um, because I just get to go to work and, and do my favorite thing. I had one of my students come up to me today and stick a sticker on me that said, do more of what makes you happy. Um, and at first I made some sort of flippant remark about, okay, I'll go you know, drink coffee and read some books. Um, but I had a moment where I realized, but I do every day. I get to go to school and I get to hang out with kids and I get to teach them to read. Um, and I get to you know, unlock pathways for them and that's the greatest joy in the world. Um, and while it is, the, the most happy, you know, the most joyful thing. It is hard. Um, you know, teaching is a demanding profession, and I know um, I couldn't do it without the support of my family. Um, my mom is also a teacher, and so having that, that um, role model in my life to show me what it takes um, to give of yourself so selflessly, and um, I really appreciate the guidance of my parents. Uh, Dad, you were right, I should have become a teacher. Um, I also really want to um, say thank you to the staff that I get to work with. I have the most amazing partner teacher who says yes to every idea that I have, even when they're half finished. And she is able to take those ideas and finish them and complete those projects, um, not just because they're my ideas, but because they're what's best for our students. Um, I also have some incredible teachers at our site. Um, that just goes so above and beyond for our kiddos, and it feels like a privilege um, to be here representing them and their hard work as well. I also want to acknowledge my husband and my kids. Um, they're the ones that make a lot of sacrifices when I'm, you know, late meetings, long weekends, and with all, all these people standing behind us, the work that we are doing in our classrooms wouldn't be possible. 
I also have to acknowledge the amazing leadership of our district and um, specifically the principals that I've had during my tenure. I feel so fortunate to have principals that um, are let me take these crazy ideas and they say, not no, but they say yes and, and we are able to create these um, amazing opportunities for our students and I'm so appreciative of that. So thank you so much for letting me be up here tonight. Representing Twin Rivers Unified School District as 2023 Teacher of the Year is Emily Negretot. Emily is a third grade teacher at Frontier Elementary School. Congratulations. Also very short. I am honored and grateful to be representing Twin Rivers Unified School District here tonight. I've had the privilege of working with so many passionate, dedicated, and creative teachers over the years. I've spent most of my career teaching at Frontier Elementary School. I am so thankful to be part of such a supportive group of educators. They have helped me become the teacher that I am today by challenging me to try new things, by supporting me when times were tough, and by going above and beyond every day to do what's best for all students on our campus. I would also like to thank my family for their unwavering support and for being my biggest cheerleaders. As you all know, teaching is not easy, but I wouldn't be here after over 20 years if it weren't also incredibly rewarding. Our words, actions, and the educational experiences we provide for our students can have a profound effect and create memories that last a lifetime. I recently found out that a former student of mine still keeps a note on his fridge that I wrote over two years ago. <sighs> yes. I had the same feeling. <laughs> um, it only took me you know, a few moments to write that note, but the effect that it had on him has lasted years. One of the best pieces of advice that I was given as a beginning teacher was to keep a folder where I could place my positive school memories. I was told that I'd be looking in that folder when times got tough. I still add pictures, letters, and photographs to that folder even today. For example, the student who challenged me every single day, <laughs> but took the time to write me a note at the end of the year letting me know that I was his favorite. A parent who wrote me a letter thanking me for helping her child learn to love school again. A photo of a particular class who caused me to change tactics, learn new strategies, and become even stronger in the end. The contents of this folder serve as a reminder as to why I love teaching and how what I say and what I do affects others. My advice to new teachers, as well as to, be, as well as to veteran teachers, is to keep a folder just like this. It will serve and help you to remind you of why, out of all of the possible professions available, you chose to become a teacher. Thank you. All right, well, let's show our appreciation to all of these inspiring teachers who are making a difference in the lives of students and families in our community. Next, I want to invite Paul Kiefer, Sacramento County Board of Education President, to say a few words about the Eleanor Lincoln Hickey Award of Merit. It is my honor to present Eleanor Lincoln Hickey Award of Merit. It is the highest honor bestowed by the Sacramento County Board of Education. But before we present the award, I would like to tell you a little bit about the award and its origination. The late Mrs. Hickey, like the teachers we are honoring this evening, was an educator who made countless contributions to education. During her decorated career, she touched the lives of thousands of students while teaching public speaking, debate, journalism, radio, television, and English. Shortly before she retired, she was named Sacramento City Unified School District Teacher of the Year and went on to be chosen Sacramento County Teacher of the Year. This was in 1978. Busy in retirement, Mrs. Hickey served on both the Sacramento City School Board and on the County Board, twice as its president. In 2005, a SCOE community school was formally named Eleanor Lincoln Hickey Junior Senior High School in her honor. After her death in 2008, the county board adopted this special award in celebration of Mrs. Hickey's dedication to teaching 
and to teachers, students, and their families. So to all the teachers here tonight, and especially to two who will be chosen as County Teachers of the Year, please know that you are carrying on a great legacy. I cannot tell you how much we respect and appreciate what you do every day in the classroom to serve thousands of students and families in Sacramento County. That was a big buildup. <laughs> now it's time to name our Sacramento County 2023 Teachers of the Year. So let's welcome Yvonne and Mandy back to the podium and we shall open the envelopes. All right, the first Sacramento County 2023 Teacher of the Year is His passion for creating a safe and inviting envir learning environment that transcends from science, art, and drama is clearly evident as he focuses on making connections with every student on campus. He not only educates his middle school students in the classroom, but also provides multiple ways for students on campus to engage in the school community. He's a science, drama, and art from John Barrett Middle School in the San Juan Unified School District. Let's hear it for Logan Grissom! Um, 20 minutes. That's 10 times more than I had last time. Um, honestly, I don't know what to say other than um, I really wasn't expecting this. I, um, I would just quote all the other teachers tonight. I love what I do. That's in my way. I love what I do. Um, I don't really need the recognition. I just like going to school every day. I like being in my classroom. Um, I'm there too much. I really need to find that work-life balance. Um, but the kids that are in my classroom are really my kids. And so that is where I feel at home. That is, I'll project. That is where I feel at home. Um, and that I just, I love it there. So I thank you all. And I thank um, the committee and the board. Um, I guess I will see Kent Kern in my classroom on Monday because I'm doing an interview now um, on TV. So thank you so much. Your second Sacramento County 2023 Teacher of the Year is... These are like quality envelopes at SCOE. I want some of these. Her ideas not only improve outcomes from un underrepresented students, but she takes action to make the outcomes a reality at her school. Through her own passion for learning and education, she's an educational role model that provides multiple opportunities for the students and peers within her school community. She's an English and AP capstone from the Consumnes Oaks High School in Elk Grove Unified School District. Let's give a big shout out for Rachel Baird. Like I said, um, one of the things I learned in Sacramento is just how small and tight-knit this community is. Um, I've met people from all of your districts. My children do theater um, with the Sacramento Children's Theater Company, with River City Theater Company. Um, I know teachers in all of your sites, and this is just, this is a great place for education. Um, and I think w one of the things that's a real passion to me this year, uh, or always, but especially in light of everything this year, um, is how lucky we are to, well, how lucky I am to work at a district, um, but in a county and a state that lets us teach what's really happening in the world. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about teachers in other states that are really challenged um, in the past year especially uh, with limits on what they can teach and how they support their students. And I'm just really glad for all of us that we get to be um, in a place that really embraces like actual education. So, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, President Keeper, Mandy, and Yvonne. I am plugging the both of you as next year to be MCs. Both of you are amazing. <laughs> well, what an exciting moment. The two county teachers of the year will be honored by the Scottish Rite Bodies of Freemasonry at a recognition event next April. The Scottish Rite also has a tradition of bestowing a perpetual trophy to each teacher. So I'd like to invite Ivan Guzman from the Sacramento Scottish Rite to come forward and present the trophies. Those trophies look like they're kind of a workout. They're, they're pretty heavy, huh? <laughs> this has been a really exciting evening. Truly honored to have shared it with all of you. And we finally got to do it in person after a couple of years. So the two teachers' applications have already been forwarded to the California Department of Education for consideration as 2023 20, California Teachers of the Year. So let's all put our energy towards that. Keep our fingers crossed, but also be sure to tune in to Fox 40 Morning News, 9.15 a.m. on Monday, so you can see both of them on TV and celebrate them and all that they do for their schools. And now, if you'll just turn your heads to both sides of the video screen, enjoy a special salute to all the teachers who, have honored, who were honored this evening, and enjoy the next few minutes as we showcase these fabulous teachers and how they're making a difference in the lives of their students. Uh, this song is called uh, We're Gonna Be Friends. Congratulations once again to our teachers of the year. You guys make me want to go back to school, but I'm a little too old for all of you. Thank you and good night.